Hey, what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the eighth episode of King Penny Podcast, man. We got a great guest today. Hey, I want to remind you guys about the deadlift contest tomorrow at the Weight Pile on the Rockies, uh, 1610 Main Street. Hey, man, we got four possible prizes, four winners, man. Cash and prizes for not everyone, but four winners. You know what I'm saying? So tap in, man. 1610 Main Street, Longmont, Colorado at the Weight Pile on the Rockies, man. Hey, let's get this episode started, man. Let's get up, welcome our guests, man. Hey, you want to state your name and where you're from, sir? State my name and my occupation and where I'm from. Uh, my name is Ricky Ramos. Uh, I'm a professional comedian or would like to be a professional comedian or aspiring to be a professional. I don't know. How you fucking, I don't know how you say it anymore. Um, no, I'm a comedian. Um, born and raised in Denver. Uh, grew up 38th and federal before it was gentrified. Um... Denver North High graduate. Uh, yeah, love love my city. Love my love my my state. Big uh, Rockies fan. Avalanche Nuggets. You know, first ever forty seven year championship. Uh, Broncos. Ride ride or die. I don't care. You know, big old native boy. You know, now I'm out here slinging jokes. So Longmont resident. Longmont resident. You're done or finished with this? I don't know if you just... I don't live on the east side, though. I live on the west side of Longmont, the fancy side, so... Really? No. That's where you're going to go with that? Off the top, huh? I'm not gonna. I'm not going to fulfill stereotypes right off the bat, all right? They're like, oh, this guy's from the east side. So how long have you been in uh, comedy? <clears throat> I've been doing comedy for, like, mm, 10, going on 11 years now. How's, yeah. How's it going? Um, it's got its ups and downs. It's like any any other profession, I guess. Um, but it is something that I get to wake up and, and get to do every day and love to do. And uh, it is a dream come true, you know, coming from where I was coming from down in Denver. and Growing up at a times where it wasn't as nice it is as it is now. Um, it's nice to, you know, be able to wake up and enjoy what you do every day versus, you know, having to go to work every day and do a job. You know, no, so you though, yeah. likes to do their passion. It's a dream come true for sure. How is the how is the Colorado comedy scene? Colorado comedy scene is is a beautiful scene. Um, it stretches from Fort Collins all the way down to Pueblo, uh, various locations throughout the state. You know, all up and down the Front Range. Um, it doesn't matter where you're at in Colorado, even Eastern, you know, Plains, Colorado. I know a few comics out there that run some shows out there. Um, so basically, you know, it doesn't really matter where you're at in Colorado. You can always find some comedy. You just gotta kind of is it like a tight knit community, or is it like you just gotta ask around? Yeah, like what? Well, it's just. You know, it's kind of like drugs. You know, you ask around and you find something. And, <laughs> that's not, that's not yeah. a long conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to start that conversation. Yeah, it's 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 something where you you know you just ask around. Hey, is there comedy shows? Or you know, most comedians are very eager to post their shows and what they're doing and what they got going on. So, um, but I mean, are they helpful? Are yeah, they, are yeah. You guys help from one another, like. Oh yeah, there's a lot of the times you know we do try to feed off of each other because the energy it, we all feed off of each other. You know, so if, if, you know, we can bring that energy to another section of Colorado or bring that energy to another part of a town in Colorado, whatever the case may be, um, yeah, we're all going to try to accomplish the same goal, which is who needs comedy in their life. So, yeah. So it hasn't always been comedy, right? There's been some bumps and rough patches in your life, right? Uh, yeah. Growing up in Denver, like I said, it was, it wasn't exactly the ideal situation, um, it was, you know, obviously broken home situation. Um, grandma was there majority of the time. Uh, my dad was single parent, uh, working as best he could to put food on the plates. And uh, like I said, my grandma picked up some slack here and there, helping him out. Um, education was real big in my family. Education was key. Um, but at the same time, you know, after my grades and, and homework was turned in, it was still the opportunity to go run with my boys and hang out with my boys. And obviously, you know, living both sides of the coin, you got to pick. And uh, eventually in, in high school, it had gotten to the point where um, – it was a full ride scholarship to UCLA to play golf, actually. Um, and, you know, I wanted to be the cool kid on the block. I wanted to, you know, run around and act like my, my stank don't stink and ended up part of uh, Colorado State property. So, and I did that, it was, you know, struggled with that, got out, um, 
you know, kept doing the same old thing, repeated scene, um, started delving in the, into drugs. And then I got the opportunity to move out here to Longmont um, through some family members. And I came out here, still same thing, flip-flopped, dealt with drugs, the whole scene, in and out, in and out of the system. Accumulatively, I spent, all together, I spent about a good 17 years in the system. Um, consecutive, I did like three and a half years behind bars. So I dealt and, and, and wrestled with it for a really long time, especially addiction. Um, hardcore drug users never did anything super crazy, but it was, you know, s some some scheduled substances here yeah, and there. You know, to get too far into that. Um, where are you at with that now? Oh, I haven't touched anything since 2017, basically. I yeah, I mean, I, I do, I do in delve in some recreational marijuanas and have a drink or two, uh, but yeah, I haven't done anything hardcore for you know since 2017. Um, which, like I said, that in itself was a journey, you know, getting clean. I went cold turkey, got my shit together cold turkey. Um, so it was, uh, it, was a, it was a bumpy road um, coming where I was coming from. Um, and then I was given the opportunity um, by the court system, actually, um, here in Boulder County. They, were, they basically came to me and they were like, what are you going to do? Like, what is your plan? What do you got going on? Like, you're young enough to figure this out. But if you keep going down the same road, it's just going to be a revolving door for you. Like, we need to figure this out. Um, and that's when, at that time, I was working at a call center in Boulder. And one of my buddies was actually graduating from CU uh, with a creative writing degree. And I was like, oh, what are you going to, you know, what are you going to make children's books? What's going on? And he's like, no, I'm going to do uh, stand-up comedy. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, well, how do I get into something like that without having to go to see you and, you know, creative writing degree and the whole nine? Um, and he's like, I'll tell you what. He's like, just write five minutes of what you think is funny and tag along with me to an open mic. And uh, uh, underneath the Hotel Boulderado was a bar. And that was where I performed my very first set in comedy. Um, and I typed out a piece of paper, took it with me. I was like, this is going to be awesome. You know, I completely bombed reading from the paper. Uh, it was, you know, it was it was horrible. It was a horrible experience. I was drunk. Um, but I took it as a challenge from that night on. I was like, I, I can do something like this. Like, I can actually try to do something like this. And from then on, you know, I just was like, oh, okay, let me figure out what's kind of funny, what's funny, writing down everything that I thought was funny. Um, and it wasn't until I ran into some local pros in the area in Boulder, and they were like, no, nah, man, you ain't. You're, you're not talking about anything. Your, your jokes aren't hitting on anything. The, you know, what separates you from the pack? Why should people listen to you? What is going to grab people's attention? Like, what story are you trying to tell us? You know, it's not just, like, who are you? Not just, you know, fart jokes. Um, so I was like, okay. I was taken back and went home and scrapped all my material and, and, uh, you know, start talking about my real life, you know, the situations growing up in Denver and being gang related and being drug addicted and going to prison and, and, you know, that whole, the, my, my whole life basically. And, you know, as comedy progressed, you know, my life progressed and as it got, you know, better and, and gave me something to focus on, obviously my stories changed. Um, I do still have more of an edgy style, but I do mix in, you know, being a, being a stepfather and, and going from the streets and going to a prison and going into a father figure role and coming home from prison and going back to school for psychology and, you know, becoming a youth advocate and just how my life changed. Um, basically just, like I said, my story, man, just telling my story. And it just so happens that people find it funny. People find it, uh, an attention grabber, um, just however we gain followers i mean i'm just out here having fun you know if you you look at my my pages and you look at my social media there's not a whole lot of videos out there of my stand-up um and i guess that's a, a lazier part on my end with the new you know phones everywhere we can record everything you know let me record my set put it up um but it's, you know, when you do be able to sit down and listen to me do a 20 minute, 30 minute set, you can see, oh my God, you know, we, we don't, we don't live our lives like that no more. You know, we're no, but I, so I normally ask people, right. <clears throat> I ask them their family situation just mm -hmm. to try to get an idea. 
And so you had mentioned like stepfather, mm -hmm. what's your relationship status or you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I actually uh, run a show here in town. We can get into that a little bit later, but uh, I run a show here in town and, and one night uh, running the show, um, I was heckled by somebody in the crowd, and uh, turns out that you know, four or five years later, she became my wife. Um, and yeah, she had three kids at the house. I kind of stepped into that stepfather role, that father role, that you know, that position. Um, and they have a wonderful, they have a, they have a, a you know, a decent relationship with their own father, and I make sure that I don't, you know interject in that um situation but at the same time let them know that i'm always going to be there for them i was well stepping into that role coming from your home like, oh it was not, you know what i'm saying like, uh, yeah. the difference between how you were raised versus coming into this situation how did you i mean it, you know when i was i was raised it it's very weird because i'm even starting to talk about it in my in my routine about how I'm starting to become a fish out of water because the times that I was raised, I mean, they're, they're changing so drastically. I mean, you don't see, you know, cholos and low riders and shooting people up anymore and drive bys and you don't, you don't hear about the gangster anymore. You know, it's, it's completely changed. So me having the mentality of I'm going to approach everything with animosity and I don't care what anybody says, it's, very hard to approach the world like that when everybody else is just so progressed already, you know, and it's just like, oh, am I the dinosaur here trying to beat everybody up? You know, am I the T-Rex running through the, the herd trying to eat everybody? And everybody's like, nah, man, we're all vegetarians now. Like, what are you doing? You know, and it's like, oh, okay, well, all right, well, let me take a step back and get my life together because the way I was taught was, you know, you you get your homework done you do what you need to do and then it's sports whatever else you got going on and then you can go hang out with your friends but at the same time you know if you didn't please your father you didn't get the good grades and you didn't hit home runs in the game you know your father would come home and smack you around a little bit you know <laughs> you know and and you know like i said that that is all out the window that is all changed you know and and me having to go through that with my my own home situation and then going out and hanging out with my friends and if we didn't steal this car or we didn't you know rob this person or we didn't do this then i was gonna get it from the homies too you know so either way i was like you know i was always fighting somebody you know um and that whole mentality is like i said that's all that's that's just so you know dinosaur archaic thinking you know it's it doesn't work anymore no. um so yeah when i do step into the role of stepfather i have to sit down and i'm like okay i'm like let's talk about this let's you know what's the issue going on how can i help you you know i try to teach them the right way like things like you know if there's a situation you know and somebody does put their hands on you do not accept that you can protect yourself in any way shape or form you know you just gotta you gotta curve it another way versus you know somebody's talking about you in in science class turn around and smack you know you can't do yeah, that nah, yeah yeah which call i want to applaud you on that man because that's that's a tough one to navigate you know what i mean especially coming from one situation that, that you're raised in that a lot of people hold on to forever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to you know what i mean like yeah pivoting and being this type of person for 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 these children and for your wife you know what i mean yeah like, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really great pivot but i do want to talk to you about this comedy thing though right quick mm -hmm. what is like the, your comedy style like what is your it's, like you know what i mean can you be boxed into type of like uh who would you say your style is more like or do you have i mean I, I think i was talking to somebody about this the other day in the simple fact that each comedian itself i mean we all have i guess a certain genre um you could say that he's got more of like a deaf comedy jam style or he's got more of a, a you know blue collar jerry seinfeld type style or you know but each comic individually has got such their own unique style um that it just i mean it like for me i i feel like my material is real real gritty it's real um you know i can be 
you know, completely squeaky clean if I'm at, you know, the Boulder Creek Festival and I'm doing a, you know, 10-minute spot to promote the Boulder Comedy Festival, you know, that I've never sweated so hard in my life, you know. Um, but I can do things like that. I can, I can be, you know, uh, on the cleaner side here and there, but I'm more comfortable being that blue, that real gritty, that, that truth teller that, you know, I'm going to make fun of certain situations that not everybody wants to not necessarily can make fun so of. You, so you mentioned that, right? Mm -hmm. Where is the line with comedy now? Where can you, like, where, like, you know what I mean? You used to be able to, used to be just a free-for-all. Yeah. You get your jokes off. Yeah. But now you see some comics tiptoeing around or, you know what I mean? Like, hey, there's boundaries here now to where if you say the wrong joke, maybe, you know what I mean? That could be the rap. Yeah, I mean, and I try to in, I guess in my personal routine, I try to make the, the routine more about, you know, what I see on a daily or how I perceive life to be. Me personally, my I'm painting the picture of you coming into my world, you know, a progressed cholo from, from Denver. Um, you know, I'm trying to paint this picture of how I see life. Um, as it is, you know, I have a co I have a COVID joke about let's not get on the first train that we see because maybe the next situation uh, we're going to have to protect ourselves in a completely different way, you know, in regards to it comes out one orifice and not the other orifice, you know what I mean? So let's not let's not jump on the first train. Like I have just perspectives because it's like I see life, you know, like oh okay, well, you know, we're going we're all going through the situation together, but I see some people jump on this train way faster than other people and um you know just again just the way i see things i talk about i'm trying to implement more about uh my past drug usage and how i was back then um you know i have a a joke about how he was like a great magician when i was in drug i would take anything you give me and i would turn it into you know <laughs> controlled substances yeah. you know just the way i see life the way i see long i have a joke about longmont um being a being a house party and how you know we perceive it in a house party and i i, I did I, so i saw the video how denver is like the cool uh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay yeah yeah, yeah yeah so i try to keep it about you know me my home the way i perceive life because yeah once you start getting into other subjects like i'm not a political comedian at all i don't have politic jokes i'm not a political person um so you'll never really see me talk about politics but i am talking about drug content and uh you know like i said my life and because i'm not gonna I'm not going to tiptoe around those subjects. I'm not the type of person that's going to tiptoe around those subjects. So for me, it's like, all right, let's take that subject off the table because if I talk about that subject, it's, you know, somebody's going to be sad. And I don't want, you know, last but thing I want. how do you deal with hecklers, though? Um, right. I, it's a, fu it's funny because we, there's a, a group, a uh, Facebook group in, in the Denver comedy scene that we all kind of collaborate and talk to each other about things. And that was one of the situations was how do we deal with hecklers as of late? Um, and everybody's trying more progressive solutions, you know, um, for me, it's, I, I, I hate to say it cause it's such an old school way of thinking, but I use the intimidation factor. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like, I, before I, before I got in the comedy game, I was a hustler. I was in the streets. I was, you know, I was a gang member. I was, you know, I was like a rapper, you know, I was dope dealer that went into the comedy game. You know, I should have been a rapper, you know? Um, but that's, I use the intimidation factor and, and, you know, me talking about the drug content on stage and me talking about prison and me talking, I don't really run into a whole lot of hecklers just because the material and the way I carry myself and, 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 you know, everything about my set is like, I, I don't really want to tell this guy anything, you know, so. So I did want to talk to you about one thing, right? So <clears throat> you being, like you said, like a Hispanic guy. I got I to gotta say Hispanic. <laughs> so a Hispanic guy from Denver, right? Uh -huh. There was recently a video that made national news, like about a woman in Lakewood at a uh, apartment complex. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A, a, a Caucasian woman. Yes. And stuff like that. And uh, there was some Hispanics throwing a, a pool party at yeah. an apartment complex that they live in. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, know what mm -hmm. I mean? It like, made national news. And she was saying some like, 
she was she she kind of lost it a little bit. You know what I mean? I, I, um, I, and I wouldn't say a little bit, but you know, like I. What was your thoughts about about that? And do you think that that's something that happens more often than not? It's it's funny when when we talk about because in my opinion. Uh, in my in, in reality, in my reality, I guess you could say, um, there's two sides to the state of Colorado, and there's two sides to Denver itself. There's um, the country folk. You know, I, I have a, another little joke that says, if you're on the on the west on the east side of I-25, we tip our hats like this. You know what I mean? If we're on the west side of I-25, we're like, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, so. In that, there's two different sides of Denver, you know, and, and for those that know Denver the way I know Denver, um, the gente, Chicanos, actually built Denver in, like, the late 70s, early 80s. Um, it was built by, you know, the Hispanic population. Um, we were a very, very large Hispanic community. We still are a very large Hispanic community. Um, but I feel like Denver and Colorado has always had that two sides to the book. It was a lot of uh, country folk you know hanging out and a lot of the gente a lot of a lot of the culture a lot of the ethnicity and i'm not just talking about um hispanic culture i mean there's so much diverse culture in the city of denver uh when i was growing up uh a lot of the quick newton projects a lot of my friends out in denver and a lot of the people i ran with were actually sioux indians you know so there's just a whole 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 diverse gumbo when it comes to denver but i feel like it's either in the ethnic pot or it's in the the good old country boy pot you know so it just kind of depends on what you want you know cowboy chili or do you want green chili you know <laughs> i'll let you go ahead and dance around <laughs> Yeah, well, you're good there with that two step now. Um, but no, no you, don't I feel, to, you don't have to answer. Uh, like, no, but I, I do but I feel a Hispanic uh, opinion about it because I, I mean I have my own opinions about it. But you know what I mean, like well, with the, like with the video. Mm -hmm. Okay, I run uh, Colorado's only bilingual comedy room down in Denver, which is at Raices Brewing, uh, right across the street from uh, Mile High Stadium. Great beer, great place to hang out. Um, and we had this similar situation happen. Uh, was it last season? I think it was last season. Um, we had a lady where she was attending. And I usually make an announcement. Hey, you know, we're doing comedy. Ten minutes. Be prepared. Blah, blah, blah. I'd say about a good half hour, 45 minutes into, into the comedy sets. Um, I have a handful of comedians down in Denver that actually do their sets in just Spanish, like only Spanish comedy. Um, and she started, uh, no comprende, no comprende. I don't know what you guys are saying, blah, blah, blah. Like started heckling the show. So I got up there and I, you know, I let, the, we'd let the comic finish and got up there. And I, I told the people, I was like, man, you guys are letting your privilege show tonight. You know, so that's the type of response that I'm going to give you. If you, you know, put that out there towards us or, you know, cause my biggest thing is it doesn't matter your culture, your heritage, your creed, your religion, your, your sex, your preference, whatever the case may be as comedians, this is art. This is an art form. At the end of the day, it's an art form. And, you know, I can't, I'm not a, I'm not a painter, you know, I'm not going to, I can't make my art and then put it on the wall for you to look at for forever. I'm not a, a, a filmmaker, uh, you know, I can't make a film and then, you know, it's on your shelf for forever. You know, I'm a comedian. My set has to have you involved. It has to have you there to listen to me in order for me to give you my art for it. So for us to pour our hearts out in our art form and for you to come back and be like, eh, 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 you know, especially in, in the Hispanic heritage, no, that's, that's not going to fly. All right. So what would you tell a young ex aspiring comedian or an old one? What would you tell them about, you know what I mean, getting in the game? What do they need to know? Um, or what skill set do they need to? It's a journey. It's a journey for sure. And and thick skin is one of the key elements, man. I remember um, early on, um, I always, I've always had a hot head. You know, I've always had a hot head. Being where I'm from, like I said, I would always meet animosity with animosity. And uh, <clears throat> I remember one of my friends saying, "He's like, bro, you can't be a comedian if you don't have thick skin." He's like, "This ain't gonna work." He's like, if you're going to be hot-headed like that every time somebody jokes and clowns on you or whatever, he goes, it ain't going to work. So, yeah, the sensitivity thing, um, 
you got to get over that because you're going to be told no. You're going to be told this. You're going to be told that. You're going to be told you're not good enough. Blah, 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 blah. blah. It's, it's a journey. And everybody's got their own journey. You can't sit here and be like, oh, I should have I should have got that water bottle. I should be my one. Like, can't do that. You know, your water will come. You just got to you gotta keep hustling and, and your day will come. You know, you can't stop. Like, my biggest thing is I haven't stopped. You uh, covid jail like i shut down the jail did a show in jail like i haven't really stopped i say 10 11 years because it was there was times where you know i wasn't able i was in jail or at writer's block or whatever the case may be but you know there was still opportunities like i said i was in i was in boulder county i shut boulder county down did a whole show while i was in there you know what i mean um so one of the key things for me is you know i didn't stop i put everything i had into it there's nights where you cry you laugh you 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 know blood guts whatever man you keep going it's gonna suck there's gonna be times where you're like oh my god i'm like cottonelle i was built for this sh-. you know what i mean yeah, and right. and then there's nights where you're like oh my god what just happened what am i doing with my life like this is not working you know um and then, like I said, you know, you can't be like, you know, how come he got that piece of pie? That's my piece of pie. Like, you can't think like that. You know, that's going to that's gonna tear you up. All right. So I want to ask you some quick questions, right? So who's your favorite comedian? New school or old school? Is there, there's a difference? Because... Well, and then and then old school is a lot go, different let's, than let's go old school man. A lot see there's and then old school is a lot different for me now too because like when when my dad when I watched my dad watch comedy, it was you know George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, uh, <clears throat> the greats you know and and then I started getting into my own you know flavor and like Eddie Griffin and Eddie Murphy and mm-hmm. you know. Um, and those guys are considered old now. You yeah. know what I mean? So who's, so who's your guy? So, you know, and then you have, like, my, my guy right now that I love to death is uh, is Mike Epps and Ali Sadiq. Okay. Because uh, they, they come from the same the same background, you know, troubles with the law, got your got your life together, you know, back at it, get out there. You know, I give, I give Cat Williams a lot of props, too, because he went through his whole you know fall down whatever he went through and then he's trying he's trying again you know so i give anybody that 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 you know who's ever been through that part where you have to completely fall down on your face completely and then get back up and and be like all right i messed up let me get my life together again let me get back at it um is there is there a comedian that you would say doesn't do it. Can you ask that, like, as a comedian? Like, you know, NBA players, they know who can play and who can't, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there, is there a comedian that can't, that, or that you feel that doesn't bring it that's really, like, high up there? Like, you know what I mean? That's. I mean, like, it, it's comedy is so, it's such a weird place because comedy can bring you up so high and then comedy will throw you back down on the ground so hard. And, I mean, look at like Carlos Mencia, you know what I'm saying? He he got to the point where he was doing his thing, TV shows, specials, and then they said, Joe Rogan called him out and said, nah, bro, you're fake. You're fake, you know? There was a whole thing at the comedy store in L.A. Joe Rogan called him out and said, you're fake. You're not a real comedian. Because, you know, Joe, he's got stand-up in his, in his yeah. past. Um, so they start calling him out on all these jokes. You know, he gets thrown down to the ground. Nobody wants him. Nobody wants anything to do with him. And... As of lately, um, he's actually been grinding it out again. He's grinding it out again, getting back out there. He's going to be at the Comedy Works, I think, here pretty quick in, like, the fall. Um, And he was just in Fort Collins not too long ago as well. But, you know, that for me is like, okay, you, you, you made it. You did your thing. You, you know, you've had your trial and tribulation, and now you're going back to it. Because there is an opportunity for him to go back and be able to get back to that spot where you're at. So that motivates you as well? You to know, see people grind like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I love to see people grind. I love to see people hustle. I love to see people, you know, not give up. Uh, that's my biggest thing is I've seen, you know, people stop comedy, you know, come in, do a couple years, 
<coughs> and then I'm out. You well, know. Also, too, you've seen the bottom. Yeah. So you know what I mean. It's just it's just a different get up once you've seen the very bottom. You know what I mean. Yeah. It's I do I do take everything. I appreciate everything. Like anything that comes my way, I'm in awe. I mean, we did like uh, I was you know talking to you before the podcast, and I was telling you, uh, you know, as of late, I'd say been like mm, three four like four three four years now i've been completely done with the system and since i've been completely done with the system um i've been able to go to cleveland north carolina uh, chicago san diego philadelphia south dakota all these other p just to do comedy yeah. you know what i mean and you know for me the the awes and the wows because growing up in denver I, I, you know, I had some some points where we, you know, we'd go to California, or we'd go here, we'd go there, but it wasn't a lot of traveling. And then I started getting in trouble, so it was being in the streets and being in the system, being in the streets, being in the system. So basically, my whole life, I lived that. You know, and then when I got home and I completely left everything behind and we, you know, we started hitting the road with comedy, I was like, oh my God, you know, I was in Chicago and I'm like, oh my God, the train's above me, you know, like, this is crazy, you know, I just, that wow, that awe factor for me is what, you know, I'm so appreciative of everything that comes my way. Newspaper articles, magazines, you know, going to, you know, eating uh, Chicago dogs, downtown Chicago by the river, you know, uh, you know, eating porterhouse steaks in South Dakota, you know, at the casinos and Deadwood. Um, that's, just, the, that's the win. Right? Yeah, I mean, I mean it's, a, it's, a, it's a victory yeah. right at the end of the day. Yeah, right? I mean. So what's, what's, so what's been your... Uh, your your favorite most favorite venue to perform at? Um, one of my well, it's it's kind of a toss up because the the club switched over, so I haven't been out there yet since it switched over from COVID. Um, but it was the Comedy Palace in San Diego. Um, I'm getting ready to go back out there probably in like October. We'll figure something out. Um, but uh, it's now the mic drop in San Diego. That's it's the new comedy club there. Um, but the Comedy Palace in San Diego that was a beautiful spot, beautiful fun room. That was actually one of my first road gigs too. So I love I love that little area, that little room. Um, and then the Punchline in Philly. The Punchline in Philly, man, is so much fun. Um, just walking in the door, doing what I was doing, and and walking out knowing that I'm a pro in their club, knowing that you know I can drop into Philly tomorrow and be like hey let me jump on a set you know and that's you know just being able to do that is is an amazing feeling and not just a professional comedy. yeah not yeah. not just you know a sh shows in the breweries either we're talking the comedy clubs yeah. you know so that's it's you know big ass wall that with everybody's name idols. yeah well, oh, you know what I, mean? I was right. sitting there that's i was sitting there in philly and there's obviously there's a picture of kevin on the wall you know kevin hardy's from philly and i'm thinking of my and all these signatures of all these comedians that have been there underneath his picture and i you know my name's on there my name's on that wall and it's just like wow like this is crazy you know and think eight years ago i was sitting in a, in a cell you know being approached by my public defender and he was like i don't know if we're gonna get out of this one you know what i mean <laughs> and it's and like signed right here yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you sign the walls with everybody's name on it exactly but my thing is this so you have a festival Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this year let's touch let's talk about that so vatos locos comedy festival is actually like i said i run uh colorado's only bilingual comedy room down in denver um which is a true bilingual comedy room we do sets in spanglish we do sets in spanish and we do sets in english it doesn't really matter i always tell you know audience and, and comedians we do both we don't be hesitant to come in and check out a show it's a very vibrant show it's an awesome show um but we do that like i said at raices last wednesdays of the month and um we were i was approached by a buddy in greeley by the name of rudy garcia and he had the idea of doing a show at the moxie with one of the original latin kings of comedy joey medina and uh i was like yeah i'm in let's do it you know let's let's see what we can get out of it and uh it was a sold out show we sold it out had to bring even more chairs more tables in great show um and then i said okay let's let's try something different next year so we brought him to raices in denver uh and then we brought him to the speakeasy here in longmont 
And then we took him back out to Greeley. And we had we had success. We didn't have great success in Greeley. We had some good success here in Longmont. They usually come out to the Speakeasy for Comedy here in Longmont. Um, and obviously we had a bunch of success at Raices in Denver. Um, and after we did the three shows, I was like, we need to turn this into a festival. This has to be a festival now. Um, and I want to highlight bilingual comics from across the country, not just in our area and not just, you know, um, cause obviously we know that there's bilingual comics and Latino and gente coming out, you know, every month to support the show. So let's see who's really out there. Um, and so I was like, okay, this year we're going to do it as a festival. We put out submissions, um, uh, and it's just been overwhelming the amount of support and the amount of just i never knew we had a submission from delaware the other day and it's like oh my i'm like oh my god i'm like delaware i'm like what are what are we doing i was like we got tax-free mexicans in delaware like what is going on like how are we up in delaware you know and so when it, so when is this thing going it's on? september 27th through the 30th and it's going to be at raices in denver uh bar 38 in denver uh the speakeasy here in longmont and then it's going to end at the moxie in greeley okay. So. so okay and we are looking for sponsors we are looking for sponsors sponsor sponsors we need sponsors uh, so go ahead and throw that plug <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's cool but you bring up the speakeasy right yes that's, that's your home court yeah we that's your that's your or, you know what I mean? Comedy. <laughs> that's your space right there. This is yeah. The speakeasy. You know what I mean? How do you how do you find comics for that? Oh, dude. Well, I am in rotation at the at the Comedy Works, um, and being rotation, you know, you you earn your chops. Uh, you go from a new name, and then they put you in a in a basically like a freshman, sophomore, senior category, um, and you work your way up. And uh, so I'm in rotation at the Comedy Works. I have a lot of, a lot of different connections I can pull from, and this and that. And uh, yeah, man, the the speakeasy is uh, is crazy. The way that show started, it originally started at uh, the Opera House across the street at the Dickens, um, and it was just it was. I mean, for those that have been up there and, and those that know the area of the Opera House, it is such a huge venue that, I mean, you put 75 people in there, it still looks like 25 people, you know. Um, so there are issues with the contract and, you know, who was making money, X, Y, and Z. So we ended that relationship. Um, and at that time... Uh, Sarah was opening the speakeasy um, and I had walked in there on like a Friday night it was like six or seven and nothing was going on locals in there just hanging out and uh, I told her I was like I was like let me do a show on a Friday here you know her DJ comes in later on in the evening so I said I'll, I'll jump in there right before the DJ comes and then we'll be out of his way you know I'm just a speaker a stand and a microphone you know um, she was like go ahead you know knock yourself out and uh yeah dude we've been there down there 10 years now it's nice. doing it's been, it's legit, bro. comedy down there and i've had people from hbo netflix uh hulu pandora just movie stars original latin so kings of comedy so how can any com uh, comedian locally reach out to you I'll to just, get on that yeah uh, just hit me up i got a few rooms up and down the front range so um yeah just reach out side splitting entertainment and yeah we'll get you in the system get you going man yeah, yeah. Man. shout out to sarah too at the speakeasy yeah. on uh third and main man if you guys are in long my man check it out great spot uh nice intimate setting especially for uh comedy what nights do you do it's that? uh speakeasies is uh last fridays of the month at uh 7 p.m and that's password comedy you can usually do reservations online too uh, when we do the bigger names we do door only stuff like that but when we do on the regular regular nights you can get online put a reservation in get you a table yeah nah bro but i just like i said man you've been grinding for a minute bro mm -hmm. you, you've seen the bottom you've came out of that you have a beautiful family now you you have your head on straight your career ahead of you man and it's just a beautiful thing man to see to witness 
And, yeah. Uh, and I want to, like I said, I want to give you your flowers now. Look, before you blow up, and then I got to pay you to show up. <laughs> <here. laughs> you know what I, mean? I appreciate it because, yeah, I was uh, I was talking to the Denver Post the other day, too, and they were, you know, they were asking me about levels of success. And, and you know, I, I tell them, you know, coming from where I'm coming from, the Quig Newton Housing Authority in Denver, you know, and being out here in the Gooseberry neighborhood, you know, know condo front yard you know i got a pug you know i got a teacup chihuahua you know i got uh i got a, a rabbit that runs around in my front yard you know pick the what is it Aust- new zealand australian rabbit or something like that kids got that um yeah man it's the level of success is just I mean, yeah, we can always. Uh, who wouldn't love a couple of specials and you know, maybe a maybe a movie or two? But you know, coming from where I'm coming from, like I said, I I appreciate everything that comes my way. So being able to you know have my home and and be where I'm at, that's that's the true success. That's the true accomplishment there. So oh, man, that's a blessing, man. So outside of the festival, right? Mm-hmm. And we we'll, we'll, we're gonna post the dates up on that mm-hmm. and the flyer or whatever like that. And then the speakeasy the last Friday of the month. Last Fridays of the month. Is there any other thing that you have we going on? J- we yeah. just added to here in Longmont, here in Longmont, we just added uh, Outworld Brewing to our calendar too. And that's probably going to be. And that's out on 119. Yeah, 119 out on the other side of Stan- Sandstone by the car dealerships out there. Outworld Brewing. And shout out to them. We that address up on here too. Beautiful, beautiful place. Black owned, black owned place. Oh, yeah, we definitely going to blast that one. <laughs> But no, it's it's a cool little venue. We're gonna do um, I believe it's third Thursdays of the month. Um, it was an open mic type deal for the longest. We're gonna switch it over do a do a regular show. Uh, get some bigger comics up this way as well. So it's uh it's it's coming around. It's coming around. So everything's yeah. a process, brother. Yeah. Like I said, man, proud of you, bro. Keep doing your thing, man. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you coming yeah, out here. I appreciate you having like me, that. man. I look forward to seeing some more videos and stuff like that. And also, too, what is it again? Uh, the Instagram. Side Splitting Entertainment, all platforms. Uh, side Splitting is Side Splitting ET on Twitter. Side Splitting, Inter- side splitting ENT on um, uh, Instagram. And then just Comedian Ricky Ramos on Facebook or whatever. That's that, Give man. me a follow or whatever. Hey, man. So. You heard it here, man. King Penny Ricky. Don't forget about the deadlift competition tomorrow at the weight pile on the Rockies, man. Even if you're not competing, come support, man. Show some love. Hey, uh, cheer on your local lift. What are the prizes? What are the prizes, Hey, man, cash. Cash? Cash and prizes, man. You know what I mean? You show up and get your lift on, you can find out. You know what I'm saying? We ain't lifting mics. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) He's like... What, what kind of cash is it? Is it legal tenant currency or is it like are you paying in yen or what? <laughs> Bilingual cash. <laughs> Bilingual <laughs> cash. Pesos. Yeah, you're paying in pesos. Oh cash. my god. Hey, man. King Pity, this is episode eight. It's a wrap, man. Got the comedian Ricky Ramos, man. Stay in touch, man. I'll holler at you guys later. Thank you, Longmont. Bro, you don't get the last word. <laughs> Look, I, went, I went through an episode two with somebody. Look fresh in my mind. Nobody gets the last word, but King Pity, we're out of here. Man. <laughs>
Stereotypes. I love stereotypes. I love them to death, man. My favorite stereotype. I love. Speaking of stereotypes, let's stop real quick. Because as soon as I walked in, y'all looked at me pretty funny, okay? Yes, I am on probation, okay? We already explained, okay? I accidentally sent a picture of my dick to my probation officer. It's all good. My public defender already informed me. It's just a small violation. Don't worry. Yes, I am on probation. Yes, I do have cocaine for sale after the show. Oh, you don't do drugs? Well, guess what, you guys? You're in luck. Yes, I have tamales for sale after the show as well. I got red and green. We're going to hook you guys up tonight. Oh, you don't do tamales? They're too spicy. Well, guess what? I have empanadas for sale. <laughs> See, some of the white people, I lost y'all. Some of the white people, I lost. Let's think of them as like artisan or artesian hand pies. I don't know how to say that fucking word. Is. Stereotypes. My favorite stereotype, no matter where we go, no matter where we touch down, it's the same thing. Little old white lady, she sees me coming out the comedy club, middle of the night. Boom, what does she do? She sees me, neck tattoos. <clears throat> Clinches the purse. I hate that stereotype because it pisses, it throws me back because it's like, bitch. You really think you're stronger than me right now? Is that what's going on? I hate that. Strong women, old ladies. Um, COVID shut us down, man. COVID shut us down, man. I had to do shows locally. Like, I did a show in Wyoming. Ugh. I was doing crowd work. I was like, hey, Wyoming, what do you guys do out here for fun? I swear to God, white boy in the front pushed his chair out. He was like, we fly kites, bro. I was like, what's going on right now? His wife poked her head around. She was like, yeah, and he's good at it too. A little science behind that shit. But we went to Salt Lake City. Oh, that's the rice cake of America. You bite into that bad boy, you're like, where's the flavor? It scared me because there's no Mexicans in Salt Lake City. For the first time in my life, I swear to God, I thought I'd, I felt like a black guy. I thought I saw one. I thought I saw one Sunday when we were leaving for the airport. I was like, "Orale, puto!" I ran over. I hugged him and shit. It was a fucking Filipino dude. I was like, "Oh, dude, this is bullshit." I love it, man. I love it. Summertime, man. Summertime's coming. Let's get ready. Especially the ladies. I love the summertime, man. Because y'all don't leave nothing to the imagination. Except for when you be look, talk to a girl, you look down at her toes, you're like, oh shit, what is that? See, some of you ladies didn't laugh because it's either you or the homegirl. Okay. She got the toenail coming over the sandal. Ooh. The paint's all chipped on it. Looks like an old childhood playground. She got a mole with hair coming out, looking like a Fraggle Rock character. Huh? I don't know whether to take you to the mall, get a pedicure, or take you to the river to fish with me. Shit! You take her up to the Pooter Canyon, she's be snatching fish out the water for you. Four cars, y'all been beautiful. I'm Ricky Rainbow, that's my time.